Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today we're gonna to show you how to draw a lemon. So grab your pencils and let's get drawing. The first thing you need to know when drawing a lemon is, uh, lemons have a, a somewhat of an oval round-like shape, so they kind of go like this. And on, let's say on the right side, they tend to be a little more round. And on the, let's say the left side, for example, they tend to have a bit of a nub. So that's what we'll be drawing. We'll be kind of drawing this oval-like shape and I'll take you through each step of the way, showing you shading, um, how to draw a light source coming from over here, and how to draw these little dimples that sometimes exist on lemons. So let's jump into things. But first off, did you know that lemons are actually typically native to Asia? So that's where they're native to. And lemons are actually a hybrid between a sour orange and a citron. So lemons are a hybrid between a sour orange and a citron. Did not know that. Um, the other thing you might realize too, or know, this might be common, but Lemons are actually very high in vitamin C, so very, very good source of vitamin C. So when you do this drawing, you wanna just make sure that your outline is pretty established. And like I said, you do have this kind of nub that sits at the other end, and we'll, we'll show you how to do some of the shading around that, but typically kinda might be the result of some, some folds in, in some of the, uh, the skin of the lemon as well. So we'll, we'll put detail over here a little bit later. Okay, but that's kind of a typical way to draw draw that, okay? So you can kind of see how that comes together. And then at the base, you want to make sure that you can see how this is a little too flat at the bottom. Lemons do have a really nice shape to them. I mean, every lemon is a little different, just like the fingers and the hands that we draw. But um, with lemons, they do typically have a very uniform shape. So if you're gonna be round at the bottom, you wanna be round at the top, that's looking a lot better. So you'd be you know, well advised to kind of keep this structure or shape. The other thing is sometimes there's just the tiniest little bit of um, different shape at the other end. And that's just due to the fact that there's a, a little nub over there. So you can definitely, definitely add somewhat of a little nub at the other end. And that could be the result of a little piece there as well. I think it's just the base or the, the bottom um, that attaches to the branch, right? So that's really what it is. So we pretty much established the outline of the lemon. Pretty easy to do. Just make sure that you're happy with it. Hopefully you're drawing along as well. If not, no problem. Just watch. You don't want to be too thick on the outline because we're really going to try to draw a 3D lemon here. And in doing so, you want to make sure that your outline isn't extremely thick. It might look a little awkward when we start putting our shading in. So keep it light. Keep it light is what I would say. So our light source is coming from the top right. So typically what we will do is just make sure that we have some um, shading down here as well. So very easily and very quickly just do some light shading. I'm actually going to um, change pencils shortly. I just wanted to kind of show you where this was going. Okay, so. Okay, actually this is a good time to change it up. What I'm going to do is grab a 7B and I'm just going to start with the bottom and just get some nice dark strokes down there as well. Try to keep your strokes in line with the curvature of the shape, in this case a lemon. If your lines can really follow some of the curvature of the item you're drawing, you might notice that it looks a lot more 3D-like. Notice how those lines that I'm drawing right now really try to follow the outer lines. Uh, really shows for a nice 3D effect. We're going to use our smudging tool and shading tool, you know, in, in most cases just our hand to just kind of blend it in but this is really what I'm trying to get at over here. I'm just gonna go back and give a little darker shading around the base over here as well. Great. So you can spend as much or as little time as you need to when doing your shading, okay? 
So we kind of did the rough shading of the base. I'm just gonna um, quickly go around the top and just, just add a little bit of shading over here. Typically the left side is gonna be darker than the right. So I definitely wanna have a little more um, darkness on the left side and kind of grow into the right, the right side with, with a lighter pencil stroke as I go from left to right. So I'll definitely have more sh uh, shadows and darkness on the left and kind of have a lighter stroke towards the right because of course my light source is coming from the top right, okay? And again, notice those lines. Notice how they do follow um, the pattern of the outer uh, shape of the lemon, okay? So by the way, lemons come from trees and they can produce 60 pounds of lemons in one year. 60 pounds, I don't know how many lemons that is, but I would guess like at least several, several like, uh, cases or bushels or whatever you want to call it. So I would say 60 pounds of lemons is, is definitely a lot of lemons. Kind of interesting. And what's also interesting is that lemons actually produce their fruit all year round. Uh, really interesting to know that uh, as opposed to some trees or plants that would produce only certain times of the year. Uh, lemons are actually produced all year around. So if you're lucky enough to have a lemon tree near you, you probably know or see that lemons are always being grown. Kind of cool. So the other really interesting thing about the lemon is that they have these little divots, um, like a lot of common fruit. I think oranges and other, other fruit have it as well. The, the divots can really just look like little dimples or divots or whatever you want to call it. Um, if I were to zoom into it, if you're looking over here, it, it kind of is this kind of round like shape in which the middle is a somewhat darker. And the, the divot to it actually looks like a little, a little dimple in there in which there's a dark spot because that's a little darker in there. So what I might do is I might actually add some, um, some dimples throughout uh, the right hand side because you kind of do see them a little more over here. The trick to doing that is just knowing that um, this part of the lemon is closest to you. So the little ripples or divots or whatever you want to call them are a little bigger. And then they would typically be smaller as you move away. And the spacing um, of these little guys are probably just going to be um, whatever you feel uh, is, is doable. So that would be the first one right there. Um, and you want to go very light. You don't want these to stand out. You really want them to kind of blend in as much as possible. In fact, if you can barely see them, it's also good because um, a lot of times in real life when you're looking at a lemon, it's, yeah, they're there, but they don't really stand out and, and jump out at you too, too much. So I might actually just really carefully just put these on and have you kind of um, follow me and watch me do this. So notice that they are just somewhat sporadic as well. So the spacing of which can definitely be um, spaced out as you need to. Okay. So I'm just gonna do one of those and another one over here. I'm just following the pattern that I did over here, which if, if you can't see that one, it's kind of like, um, kind of like this, has a dark spot over here and gets lighter because this dark spot is, is farther in and deep into the divot. And then the outer part tends to have a bit of a, of a 3D effect to it. And then when you kind of blend that out, it does look like somewhat of a divot there. So that's all I'm really drawing. That's the close up of what I'm drawing there. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that kind of helps you kind of create these little divots. So. I'm using a sharp HB just to do the outline, and I'm gonna grab my 7B and add just a little more shading in a second. So let's continue this process. I think the trick here is really patience. 
you really want to make sure you have patience when you're doing this. It takes a lot of time. Did I mention that lemon trees, um, the leaves of the lemon tree can actually be used to make tea? So lemon tree leaves are often used to make tea. I don't know if you knew that. Maybe, did I mention that? I can't remember if I mentioned that or not, but um, the leaves are often used to make tea. And the other interesting point is that the high acidity of lemons are actually really good for um, cleaning, cleaning aids. So anything that's high acidity tends to have a really good use for cleaning products. So um, I believe the high acidity of the lemon is natural cleaners or what have you, um, tends to work really well for uh, cleaning aids. So, As we go farther away and towards the outside of the lemon, these should really get a lot fainter. You should really, um, really try to make them as faint as possible just because um, they're not as noticeable and they should be much smaller and really kind of fade away into our drawing. So you're gonna see how that comes together as well. Okay, so we're gonna keep going here. They may, look, they may look strong right now. Um, these will actually blend in a lot more once we finish our final shading. Okay, so in doing so, I'm gonna go back to my 7B, and what I'm gonna do is just try to draw a little bit of shading around them, so. What I'm trying to do here is just blend the shading of these divots into the actual shape of the lemon. You don't want these look like lines just sticking out like sore thumbs, right? They kind of look like they're out of place. So if we put a little bit of shading beside each one, um, what we can do is actually have this really blend into the, the drawing of the lemon. I'm always following that shape that I described earlier. The shape of that outer line of the lemon should really be followed as much as possible. Remember, towards the bottom, you follow the shape. Towards the middle, the line does not have as much curvature in it. It's the best way to kind of create these 3D-like lines. You want to keep that curvature there as well. Okay. So as I'm doing this, these, you know, these little dimples or, or ripples or whatever you want to call them, they should really be blending in with your lemon a lot more. They should really, really be kind of becoming one with the shape of the lemon. So hopefully you're seeing that as well. And I'm just going to keep this going here and create some shadow and shading on the top piece as well. Again, I'm using my 7B. 7B is a really good tool to kind of um, introduce and just let the shading kind of bleed into each other in terms of the, the shading shadows as well as in a second we're going to be um, just using a smudge technique to kind of let some of the lead um, 
bleed into each other and just kind of survive and and uh, you know look a little more natural as well so you can see already that it's really starting to come together you can see the little divots there that are present but they're also not taking over I'm going to switch to an 8B and I'm just going to kind of pivot myself around and really just get some nice dark shadows down at the bottom. This is really what's going to pull this all together here. The 8B is a really, really, really good tool to do this. If you've ever wondered how do you get that kind of, you know, the last bit of the drawing to kind of come together, a lot of times it's... Uh, it's just that extra pencil that you grab that really makes things look a lot more realistic. Um, a lot of times with drawing, you tend to do a lot of your work and the result isn't there, but then the last 10% of the drawing is really where things come together. So don't be afraid if you know you spent 90% of your time and you're not there. A lot of times the last 10% is when things do come together. So don't be frustrated at all. Don't get discouraged, nothing like that. I added my shade, my shadow and shading towards the bottom. I also want to make sure that that carries over to the top left because my light source is here. It's going to be a bit of a lighter shadow uh, shading over here. I want my, my lightest spot to be right over here. Even the nub over here, um, which is not attached to the branch. We, I think we said that this part was attached to the branch. A little bit of growth there okay this part's attached to the branch this part is not this part has some shadowing towards the bottom and a little less at the top if you can tell that's where i'm going here okay How's it going for you? Are you drawing along? Are you just watching? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing from you. We love knowing what you're up to. Are you drawing it? Are you, are you working on this for a project or just kind of as a recreational thing? Please let us know. We love hearing from you. It's something we uh, really enjoy as well. I'm just gonna clean up my outer lines here. Just give it just a little sense of completion and, uh, and a sense of being one item here rather than the the smudging that has gone off a bit, okay? Making sure that my roundness is still consistent. For the most part, it's pretty good. Okay. The only other thing that I'll say at this point is, you might wanna grab a sharper 7B, for example, and just kind of um, go back and, and do what I had mentioned earlier, which is try to let some of these dimples blend in a little more with the lemon itself. So if you want, you can actually go back and just kind of do that as well. In fact, it might be worthwhile even going back to an eight. Get a little more strength out of that as well. But go very light on the eight. If you're gonna do that, just go very light, especially with these little smaller, you know, dimples that we had drawn over here. Just go very light because you don't want them taking over, but you still wanna show that you have some of these little dimples on your lemon as well, so. You definitely don't want a spot or a circle kind of what I'm doing now is I'm kind of going like this. So see, that's kind of what I'm drawing over there. And then I'm gonna smudge it out like that. So that's really what I'm putting in to each of these little spots.
So we drew our dimples kind of over here where the lighter light is, the light source may be coming from here, but you still do have some dimples that do sometimes exist even in the darkest of darkest spots. It does not hurt to put a few of these um, little markers in. So I'm actually gonna do that right now. And that will kind of blend into these little, you know, dimple, dimples and ripples that we put in over here. Okay. Remember, as you go closer to the outer line, these are going to get a lot smaller and lighter. And as you go towards the center, you might actually have just a little more um, lead drawing some of these little dimples in your lemon. Okay. See how that really comes together? See how it looks a lot more uniform? The last thing I would say is just make sure that you smudge all of this together and just so that it looks very, very uniform and kind of looks as one. Don't be afraid to keep smudging and, you know, you can use your thumb or your finger, whatever you need to do, but this should really come together quite nicely at this point. Hopefully you're kind of seeing the same kind of results that we're seeing over here. And uh, I think that kind of does it. Let me just kind of make sure I finish this off quite nicely. All right, so I think that pretty much does it. You know, I'm pretty happy with what we've come up with over here. Hopefully you're following along and doing the same. Let us know in the comments below. Um, the last couple little tidbits or facts about lemons that I can tell you with is that uh, in terms of the United States, California and Arizona produce um, uh, most of the lemons in the United States. Kind of interesting. I know California is well known for that. And the most, type, most common types of lemons are actually the mayor, Eureka and Lisbon lemons. So uh, I, th I thought there was just one lemon, but I guess there's multiple different types. So very interesting. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed the drawing. Hopefully you're practicing or just watching for entertainment. And again, hopefully you got some interesting facts from this video. So thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, follow along. We're going to try to post at least one video every single day. So thank you again for watching and have a great day.